Вітаю! Брифінг присвячений викриттю брехні та пропаганди держави-агресора. Good afternoon. The briefing is dedicated to exposing the lies and propaganda of the aggressor state. In recent days, before the visit of the International Atomic Energy Agency delegation to Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, occupied by the Russian aggressor, the entire media space has been filled with false reports that Ukraine is shelling nuclear power units. These messages circulate in the Russian media, as well as in international media, which are loyal to Russia. And this is an absolute lie. Ukraine has nothing to do with the shelling of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, especially on the eve of the IAEA visit, which had been made at the invitation of the Ukrainian side in order for the whole world to be convinced of Russia's nuclear terrorism. Moreover, even certain details of how Ukraine carries out this fake shelling are thrown into the media space of the aggressor state. In particular, Russia today, that is, the Russian state broadcaster in the international arena, reports that Ukraine is allegedly launching switchblades drones over the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in order to hit into the spent nuclear fuel storage. This is absolutely untrue, and the purpose of these reports is only to, as usual, shift responsibility for crimes committed by Russia itself to Ukraine. It is a typical model of behavior for an aggressor country that came to our lands, kills Ukrainians, and still has the audacity to blame Ukraine for something. But not only these lies have filled the information space in recent days. As always, the Russian media, meaning a message which circulates in this media, tells about the alleged involvement of Ukraine in biological laboratories that develop biological weapons. And this time, the best son of that channel publishes these messages, which is also a Russian state propagandist. The channel outlines the information that, as it claims, a military biological activity of the USA on the territory of Ukraine began as early as 2004, after the Orange Revolution. It's a complete nonsense which was refuted by the Russian state chemists and biologists themselves. There were and are no laboratories for the production of biological or chemical weapons on the territory of Ukraine. Russia continues to claim non-existent victories on the battlefield, in particular with the mouth of its officials. That is, representatives of the state, the Ministry of Defense, of the aggressor state, they tell lies to the whole world. In particular, let's look at one of their reports. Quote, Due to heavy losses and loss of combat readiness, soldiers of the units of the 53rd Mechanized Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine in Novomikhailovka of the Donetsk People's Republic and the 93rd Mechanized Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine in Dibrivne in the Kharkiv region abandoned positions and left the battlefields. It's very easy to check. I personally contacted the 93rd Brigade, which had left the settlement long ago. Already it seems that the whole world knows that the heroic 93rd Brigade Holodny Yar is defending Mahmud and even not just fighting back the aggressor, but pushing back from the occupied to its territory and has no relation to the Kharkiv region for about a month. But the Russian propaganda keeps throwing in this fake in order to attribute non-existent military victories to itself. For example, there is another message about the 14th Brigade. I quote, a thwarted attempted offensive by the armed forces of Ukraine in the Kharkiv direction. The 14th Infantry Brigade of the enemy lost more than 50 men, claims the Russian Defense Ministry. Later this message is rebroadcasted by the Russian state agency TASS. I get in touch with the 14th Brigade, and they say that this is complete nonsense and lie. Nothing like that ever happened with the 14th Brigade. Note a few more Russian propaganda throw-ins to justify their war or to show total disregard for Ukraine. Ukraine as a sovereign state, thus creating a request in Russian media space for continued military action against Ukraine. Look at what the Russian propagandist and director Nikita Mikhalkov allows himself. He states that it is necessary to ban the study of the Ukrainian language in the occupied territories. It seems to be because the Ukrainian language is anti-Russian. That is, first they come to our lands, kill citizens, occupy territories and then ban the Ukrainian language because it seems to be against Russia. Of course, the Ukrainian language is the language of the Ukrainian state, and the Ukrainian state will restore its sovereignty over all the occupied territories. But this example of Russian propaganda is yet another evidence of the use of the worst Nazi propaganda thrown in by Russia, which questions the existence of the Ukrainian nation itself. But Russian propagandists themselves are outraged by the fact that not all Russians support 
for this war, that they do not come out to support the war, they do not donate money. And then it turns out that some of the performers who condemned the start of this war are coming back and singing in Moscow clubs. Just look how the propagandist from Komsomolskaya Pravda, Alexander Kotz, the author of a throw in about the so-called Wagner mercenaries operation last year, which almost created international problems for Ukraine, is outraged. So now Kotz is outraged that Meladze gives shows in Moscow clubs, and there are full halls greeting him with love. Link writes, this issue of disrespect for oneself and basic mental hygiene. It can be confirmed that Russian propagandists have been outraging for weeks, that there is no support for the war. We can emphasize with them in their thankless activity. Let's wish them more informational and military defeats in the future. And finally, an interview with Dmitry Medvedev, the former president of Russia and now a man who holds the little understood position of deputy chairman of the Russian Security Council. He came up with yet another justification for starting Russia's aggressive war against Ukraine. He was this in an interview with French television channel. I quote, for one simple reason, Medvedev said, if Ukraine received support and joined NATO, and then one of Ukraine's crazy leaders started a military operation against Russian territory, against Crimea, it would mean the beginning of the World War III. One sentence and three untrue statements. First, Ukraine had no support for joining NATO. Unfortunately, this is true. Until the last days of the beginning of the military aggression, there was no consensus on Ukraine's possible membership in the alliance. Secondly, there is no Russian territory like Crimea. This is Ukrainian occupied territory. Of course, sooner or later it will return to Ukraine. Third, no World War III would begin if Russia didn't start provoking it. Because all Russia has been doing for the last decades is occupying the territories of others, blackmailing the whole world with the fact that in the case of attempts to liberate these territories, some kind of global war may begin. There will be no global war. Sooner or later Ukraine will unite within the historical borders of 1991. Once again, I urge you not to trust Russian propagandists and officials. Trust the Ukrainian media, the Ukrainian telethon and the Ukrainian military and political leadership. See you.